Hi Superstars, it's Katie Farner. I want to talk to you today about your network and the importance of your network. One of the questions that I get more than anything is, how do you grow beyond your network of customers? And what a lot of people don't understand is that in order to grow your network bigger, you have to utilize the contacts that you do have in your network effectively. So this is how I coach my new team members that I personally sponsor to work with their network. So you want to start with your list of 100. That's first. Sit down, use your consultant startup guide, or maybe you, you know, maybe you're watching this video and you've been a consultant for years and you've never really effectively used your network. Pull out your startup guide or just write it down on a piece of paper. So you want to create your list of 100. Where a lot of people make a mistake is with the list of 100, they think it needs to be like their BFFs or their close family. And that is not the case. You're looking for your acquaintances also, not just people you're close with. So scroll through your Facebook friends list, go through your phone contacts, go through your address book if you still have an address book. Show that list to your spouse, show that list to your close family. Ask them, hey, am I forgetting anybody that, you know, maybe we know as family friends or, or what have you. You wanna make sure that your list is so thorough and you'll realize that you know a lot more people than you think you do. This list is so critical because this is what I like to call your river of your business, the lifeblood of your business. So when we all start out, we have this list of 100, which is our main large river. Every single name on that list is potential for a stream to develop, connecting your large river to another large river. So if you look at every single person on that list as another body of water, you know, that can connect you to another large network, you're going to find success. So when you're creating your list of 100, really, like I said, think outside of the box, think big, don't just think immediate friends and family, think about your past coworkers. And really the best way to do that is scroll through your Facebook friends list um, and use all those contact methods that I mentioned earlier where you would have contacts stored. So once you've got your list completed, you want to spend a few minutes looking at every single person on that list. And you want to ask yourself, how can this person help me grow my business? And spend a few minutes thinking about them. What do they do for a living? What does their spouse do for a living? Do they have children? Are their children involved in sports? Think about all of these things and you're gonna realize that some people on your list really have nothing that like stands out that could really help you a whole lot but you will also find that there are people on that list who definitely have something that stands out that could help you maybe it's somebody who's really active in the community that is definitely someone that you would want to talk to about events see if they have any suggestions for upcoming community events or even groups that you could be a member of Maybe somebody on your list is already in direct sales. That's somebody that you would want to connect with and see if they're a part of any local networking groups for people in direct sales. Maybe they aren't. It'd be awesome to start one, the two of you. Gather some people who are like-minded, who are also working network marketing businesses, and you can all feed off of each other and help each other. Maybe somebody on your list is in real estate or their spouse is in real estate. That's somebody that you could connect with about doing Scentsy for closing gifts and using Scentsy for their, you know, for, to set up in an open house that they may be doing. Maybe somebody on your list is involved with a school or is a teacher. You could talk to them about fundraisers. Maybe somebody on your list has a son or a daughter involved in sports or dance or cheerleading. That is somebody that you could connect with also about fundraisers. When you start analyzing every single person on an individual basis, instead of looking at the mass amount of names, you will find a lot more potential leads. Now, most of the people on the list, you're just gonna be asking them to do a home party with you or asking them to do a basket party with you. Especially those people that work in an office where there's a lot of people, that's definitely someone that you'd wanna target for a basket party or even an office party right after work one day. So. Once you've completed your list, completed analyzing them, make sure that you've made notes next to each person. 
Because when you contact that person, if you're prepared and you've got little notes in front of you, you're gonna sound much more professional and you're really gonna have your stuff together and not get caught off guard in that conversation. So your language is so important when you call these people, especially if you're launching your business, because you've got to ask for their support. They need to understand that you want to make this a success. This isn't just some random thing and you're going to sell it for a month and then start selling another direct sales company the next month. And maybe, then maybe three years later, three months later, start selling for another direct sales company because that's what people are used to seeing regarding direct sales. People are used to seeing their friends in a revolving door selling this and then selling that and then selling this. So when you prove to them that, you are committed and you wanna make a business of this, they're gonna be much more willing to help you. And of course, time is only gonna help prove that case as well. But at least in your initial conversations, showing that you are committed to this and you wanna make it work will help. So say you're contacting somebody who you just wanna to ask to host a party. Here's how I would suggest asking them. So call them up make you know friendly conversation hey how are you you know it's been a while since we chatted i'm so excited you know you know looking forward to reconnecting with you blah 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 something like that just friendly conversation and then get to the point you don't want it to seem like you're beating around the bush or you're trying to mask why you're really calling so i would say i wanted to call you because i'm so excited i started a new business or i started my own business you don't want to say, I signed up to sell Sensi or I signed up to sell Velada because that just sounds so um, typical. I don't know, like like I said before, it, direct sales can be a revolving door. And so you don't want to be like, oh, I signed up to sell da 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 da. So you want to say, I started my own business. I'm so excited to tell you, I started my own business. And they're going to, of course, say, oh, yeah, what is that? Or what are you doing? You could say, have you heard of Sensi yet? Have you heard of Velada yet? Ask them a question. You want this to be a two-part conversation, not you just talking at them. So asking them a question is so much better than saying, oh, I signed up to sell Sensi. I started my own business. Oh yeah, what's that? Have you heard of Sensi or Velada yet? In my case, you know, where, where I'm located most often, the answer is, no, but maybe in your area, they're gonna say, yes, I have heard of Sensi. Maybe they're gonna say no. That's gonna lead to the next part of the conversation, which is either gonna be you describing Sensi or you saying, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Have you gotten to try it yet? Maybe they've heard of it, but that doesn't mean that they've tried it yet. So just because they said, oh yeah, I, I know what Sensi is, doesn't mean they're using it. So make sure that you repeat, you know, follow with that follow-up question. Oh, are you using Sensi yet? If they say, no, I haven't heard of Scentsy, the way I like to describe Scentsy is, I don't like to say it's a wickless candle because the word candle can confuse people. You automatically associate candle with a wick. So I like to say, oh my gosh, Scentsy are beautiful decorative warmers that use a light bulb to safely scent your home with amazing fragrance. Something like that. You highlight the fact that it's safe, it's using electricity, and that you have wonderful powerful fragrances so you know obviously they're gonna respond oh that sounds nice or whatever and you say yeah I'm really excited about my new business I have high goals for my my business in this new year and I really want to make it work so as my friend as my family member as my whatever I'm really hoping that I can count on you to help me make my launch of my new business a success can I count on you to do a party with me? How can they really say no to that? When you put it that way that I'm hoping I can count on you to help me make the launch of my new business a success. Will you host a party with me? How can they say no to that? If somebody called me and asked me that, I don't know how I could say no. So see what their answer is they might be like oh i don't know my place is so small offer up your own place offer a basket party we need to be proactive and offer solutions to objections and the more you do that the more comfortable you're going to get so these that's an example of how you're going to ask somebody to do something like that 
And the conversation would almost be exactly the same for somebody that you're going to talk to about using Sensi as closing gifts, who's a realtor, or fundraisers. You know, maybe you're calling somebody who you want to, you know, get their daughter's cheerleading team to do a fundraiser with you. The conversation would almost initially be the exact same, except you would say, you know, you would say, have you heard of Sensi, blah, 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 blah. Say, I know your daughter's in cheerleading and I would love to help them raise funds could you give me contact information or put in a good word for me for someone who's in charge of that? It's that simple. Ideally, you want to walk away with the contact information for whoever is in charge of that and her um, saying that she's going to give you, you know, a good word to this person, give you a, um, give you a good review or whatever to that person. So, that is why utilizing your network is so important. And then any parties that you get booked, any fundraisers that you get booked, anything that you get, your number one goal from that, from that event, from that party, from that fundraiser, is to get more parties booked. If you are not focused on parties, booking parties, booking parties, booking parties, your business will really struggle to get off the ground. I know a lot of people out there might be watching this video and think, well, I don't really do home parties and my, my business has done great, but you're doing something else. Either you're really great at marketing on social media and so you can really do a great job with online, but you have to be in a real niche for that. You really have to know what you're doing. Or maybe you do a ton of events, which is great, but you still, when you're starting out, have to find those events. And one of the best ways to find events is by utilizing your network. So I'm a huge believer in the fact that the home party is the base of this business. After all, this is a party plan business model. So that is where I have really found my success. Thanks to focusing on home parties and small events, I have been able to earn the annual sales award every year. I've been able to consistently sell 2000 plus every single month. Home parties are where it's at. And if you create your business model around that as well, I promise you're gonna find great success in your business as well. So good luck with using these um, at tips and advice for working with your network. And I hope that it helps you to expand and really have a ton of healthy streams running through your business. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure you subscribe and hey, share it with your team, share it with your new recruits to help them work their business. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.